Theatre Phonic presents The Phantom Bagpiper. Written by Barbara Jennings. This is the life. Sunbathing on deck, entertainment in the evening, lovely food, weighted on hand and foot. No wonder cruises are so popular. Are you enjoying yourself, Arthur? I'd soon be at home, sitting in the garden and listening to the cricket. And who'd be cooking your tea and ironing your shirts as per usual while you lazed about? Uh, Point taken, Deirdre. Scottish dancing this evening. I haven't done that since I was at school. The dashing white sergeant. Who? It's a dance, not one of your colleagues. Mina says there's a proper bagpiper as well. Who's Mina? Our cabin steward, Arthur. The person you grunt at when she brings your early morning tea. Really, I sometimes wonder how you got to be a detective inspector. Not by Scottish dancing. Another lovely sunny morning. My feet ache after all that dancing, but it was a wonderful evening. And Cameron was the icing on the cake. Who's Cameron? The bagpiper, Arthur. I nearly cried when he played. My love can tire, oh swift flowing wind. (sighs) I'm glad you controlled yourself. Mina says he comes on the cruise several times during the season so we can visit friends in Casablanca when the ship stops there. The company give him a reduced rate and he plays the Scottish dancing night. And other evenings, if people ask. Seems a long-winded way to visit your friends. Combining work and pleasure. I'd like to hear him again. I'll talk to Estelle. And before you ask, she organises the entertainment. I mustn't leave it too long, though. Mina says he doesn't play after Casablanca. What do you mean, he doesn't play after Casablanca? The crew joke about it, Mina says. He has such a good time with his friends that he spends the rest of the cruise recovering. Ah, oh, well, you're only young once. Do you remember when we could dance half the night without getting sore feet? <laughs> I remember when you could. Here's your drink. You took your time. I'd have come looking for you, only somebody would have nabbed these deck chairs. Deirdre, there's no ice in this. Yes, there is, but it's melted. I ran into Cameron, that's why I've been so long. (laughs) Did you get his autograph? No need to be sarcastic. I was asking him what else he does, apart from these cruises. Some teaching, apparently, and a regular booking at a Scottish hotel. Are you listening, Arthur? Don't have much choice, do I? The hotel was originally an 18th century mansion, he said, and there's a legend about a phantom bagpiper walking the grounds at twilight, playing laments for the death of his young bride. Isn't that romantic? I don't call your wife dying romantic. It isn't that she died, it's that he... Oh, never mind. Some people spend the night at the hotel whenever he's there, just to hear him playing the part of the phantom bagpiper. Although the actual ghost hasn't been sighted for over a century. Is he going there after the cruise? I don't know. Why'd you ask? Just, uh, just curious. It seems only five minutes since we were coming on board and finding our cabins and now it's all over. I've had such a good time. What about you, Arthur? I could have done without the Scottish dancing and the karaoke and the woman who never stopped talking about her insides. (laughs) Where did you get to earlier? You disappeared for ages. I was having a chat with the captain. What about? Police business. 
Don't be daft. You're on holiday. What were you... Oh, look, there's Cameron ahead of us in the customs desk. Surely that customs official isn't asking him to open the bagpipe case. What else is he likely to have in there? Oh, there he's manhandling the pipes and prodding and squeezing the bag. That's disgraceful. Can't you intervene? I have intervened. Now he's ushering Cameron through the side door. What's going on? At a wild guess, he's unearthing some, let's call them Moroccan souvenirs, Cameron stored inside his bagpipes, which prevented him playing after the stop in Casablanca. Souvenirs he would have passed on to those regular visitors to the Phantom Bagpiper. For a price. Cameron's a crook. (gasps) Really? I don't know what to say. Oh, you'll think of something. And you worked all that out? Don't sound so surprised, Deirdre. There must be some reason I'm a detective inspector. Well, that's quite enough excitement for one holiday. Didn't you enjoy any of it, Arthur? I enjoyed being with you. You old softy. You've been listening to The Phantom Bagpiper, written by Barbara Jennings, directed by Emmeline Brayfield, with Jonathan Legg as Detective Inspector Arthur Meadows, and Helen Fullerton as Deirdre Meadows, produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. For a full list of the music included in the play, please see our show notes. The theatrephonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland, performed by Jackson Pentland, Molly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the Theatrephonic podcast, go to catonapiano.uk forward slash theatrephonic. Tweet or Instagram us at theatrephonic, or visit our Facebook page. If you enjoy Theatrephonic and would like to get more content, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Well, don't sound so dis- I oh, enjoyed being- oh, wrong accent. And who'd be doing the cooking? And who'd cook- She's kind yeah. of like you're a police informant. <laughs> <laughs> She's my narc. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I know, I suddenly thought I needed to breathe and I stopped <laughs> and, and thought that's wrong. Not by Scottish country dancing. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Ba-da.